Hey, how your mom doing? Welcome to the Far Reaches podcast. We are four friends from Eastern Oregon who've traveled the world and wound up scattered across the U.S. Join us as we get together to talk about current events, old events, agriculture, politics, movies, books, stocks, love, and even a little bit of life. No, we don't always agree, but we stay friends and even enjoy a few laughs. We think you will too, so come on along and enjoy the ride. And don't forget, keep on reaching. Hey, don't forget to stop by our special friends at B&K Auto Salvage who help bring this podcast to you each and every week. Folks, with over 1,200 used vehicles in stock and a large selection of 4x4 parts available, that's always being updated. B&K Auto Salvage is your Eastern Oregon one-stop shopping for the automotive world. And be sure to listen very close every week for the Far Reaches promo code that's going to get you discounted pricing and bump some of those prices on that scrap. So that's our good, good friends at B&K Auto Salvage. Make sure you told them the Reacher sent you and listen every week for the promo code to get extra savings. Hey, how your mom and them? Welcome. That's right. It's the Far Reaches podcast. We are here. We've all been on hiatus. We've all been aging and working and traveling and doing all sorts of fun stuff. You know, life gets in the way sometimes of entertainment, but we are back. We are live on Facebook right now. You can find us on still all the regular platforms of YouTube and Spotify right next to next to Rogan, uh, Apple Podcasts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're here. Uh, we're down a couple of reaches at the moment. The boys might be coming in soon. I'm Micah. The man in the Pendleton shirt in the vehicle is Richard. So we're the Lake County boys showing up. The uh, Umatilla boys, as they would say, are still MIA. I think uh, Joel is in the middle of a hectic darts game. The man is addicted to darts, which there's worse things he could be addicted to. Let's let's face that. Uh, and Raleigh is uh, somewhere between Texas and Wallowa County. Um, who knows? Uh, we'll see what they uh, they make the quest. Joel said it'd be a few minutes late. Richard and I are here to hold down the fort and kick it off. So good day, everybody. Good to see you again. Welcome back. It's been a little while. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, wait a minute. I thought I went live already. Maybe I didn't. Are you not live? I thought I was. Let's try it again. Turn to live stream. I thought it said recording now. Well, it said, I thought I said going live, but uh, huh. we'll find out. Maybe I'm, wait a minute, I'm already, it says live. Yeah, I think they're crazy. <laughs> I even got a notice on my phone, Far Reaches Podcast. Yeah, so I don't I get it. Know. I think everybody will be all right one way or another, but uh, It'll be fine. we'll figure it out. No. We've had... We've had worse things go on, like. I'm a, Schultz might be having withdrawals. Yeah, I know. Schultz he is, John Boy is, Party Mom is. Uh, yeah, Mouse. Mouse has been cussing us. Yeah, so. Uh, I get it. I'm gonna restart the Facebook Live. I think. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't even find the. Uh, the page it's live on. You're yawning already. That's not good. It's been a hellacious couple of weeks. I hear you there. That sounds like a way to kick off a reach around. But first, let me let me truly thank our sincere and great sponsors, BK Auto Salvage, right there in the beautiful Grand Run Valley. They help bring this magic to the world. Remember, use your reach or promo code LGB for discounts on full parts and a bump on that scrap price. Uh, our good friends in the beautiful Grand Run Valley, that's La Grand and Baker City, 541-963-6744. Again, being gay auto salvage. So with that, thank you again, folks, for keeping this alive and and rolling. Richard, start us off with your reacher, and you got your nice co-pilot there too. That's awesome. <laughs> Switchers is here in the house, and it looks like I'm locked out of my cows. That's always fun. Yeah, that's, that's possible. Oh, wait a minute. There's a cows secret. Got There's a secret. I might be all right. Always Can you? Uh, oh. This is bad timing. Um, reach around. Yeah. Yeah. What's been going on? You're like, been a, it's been a busy couple of weeks. And then I was like, what's been going all on? My cows yeah. are, all my cows are in uh, the other side of the hill now. So I was just going to down to see if they were mostly all standing up. I haven't checked one bunch for a while. So. Ah, that's good. Are they, do they appear to be standing? 
Well, from what I can see, my cousin locked his gate, so I can't drive down the road anymore. So I'm going to have to get a key. It's come to this, time. getting a key? Yep. Sold wow. another ranch. That was exciting. Say again? I sold another ranch. That was exciting. No, oh, outstanding. Well, it never got out of probate, and I never got to list. Well, I got to list parts of it. Um, but uh, we got the price that we originally asked for it. And uh, despite a lot of shenanigans, we got a good fair price. And um, yeah, so that was really uh, not ideal. I would have liked to list it and get it out there, but uh, sometimes that's not the way it works. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it was a great experience. Uh, worked with some great lawyers. I know it's hard. I feel like biting my tongue <laughs> just saying it. <laughs> it's a full on oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had a, it was a good, outcome and uh the the guy i started working with had passed away halfway through so i had some property listed with him then he passed away and um got it relisted then it got tied up in lawsuits and uh somebody sued an outside party sued all the the heirs and uh it's quite the mess but everybody's happy now and uh singing kumbaya and uh lawsuits all went away Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And look at that. We've had two awesome updates as you started giving your reach around. We're back live on Facebook. And look who's just joining us in his comfy chair. I don't know what the hell color that is. Mr. Bigsby, balls. Must be back in. Uh... Well, I guess we scared him off. His folks, he was here for about 13 <laughs> seconds. And then, boom. I guess that was his internet time for Willow County. So you made it through. Uh, That's good. Yeah. And uh, real estate's clicking right along. And uh, last week I spent all week moving cattle. And uh, I heard. I'm happy to be finished with that little chore. I talked to one of your friends indeed, Mr. Oh, yeah. That came and helped me. Help is a, help is a you know, generous word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need, you know, I need more uh, bossing. That's what I need. <laughs> and well too bad this friend's so shy you couldn't get it out of him if you tried yeah so raleigh's niggling on his nuts <laughs> <laughs> greetings good day sir good day we were just recounting how it's been eons since we've all been in the same place probably much to the benefit of the fbi but uh yeah that'll learn him yeah, I haven't honestly. I don't remember when the last one was. So, Long time. Yeah. I think you're still calving, Rolls. Yeah, I think that's over now. So <laughs> mine is officially over today. All the ones that had it calved got loaded in a trailer and dumped out on their own. So yeah, I mine it. mine got that about two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're on Free, your own, uh, ladies. Yeah. Ah, good luck. Vaya con Dios. You'll figure it out. Yes. <laughs> ah, enjoy. Yes. So that we've been gone for like a month, Richard, and that's your update is you sold a ranch. I mean, not that I'm shortchanging that at all, but you know. Oh, I moved my cows. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I forgot. Moved cows. Got to move off. Shipped off. Had some good team I had building. Been every day to keep them contained and fencing every night to keep them contained <laughs> <laughs> so it was all night and all day so uh so yeah. dang yeah you, you got spare time now huh i don't know since we last did this that i got had i gone to carmel i don't think so you were headed there i think uh, yeah so i had a nice little wedding in carmel and uh which was great on the beach so I always wanted to see Carmel. I didn't make it down to Big Sur. That's still on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I flew back to Washington, D.C. for uh, my uh, cousin's confirmation. I was his sponsor. So a whirlwind trip and a day and a half in D.C. and two days on the plane. So wow. I guess I have been doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, see? Yeah, you got to... <clears throat> 
throw it out there, Richard. Be proud of what you're doing, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I never, I've uh, been around DC. I never got to go into the actual capital, and uh, it is absolutely amazing. And uh, uh, it's way I once you go, I mean, lucked out and got to go in the Washington Monument. Oh wow! So, yeah, great tour. Um, yeah, I was, the whole time I was in D.C., I was thinking, you know, despite how crazy all the politics are, we have so much to be thankful for. We're such a, I mean, really, no other nation has a capital quite like D.C. And it's just, even with all the dumb shits that are running the country, D.C. still sort of hums like mm-hmm. a power place and uh, ought to be revered and got to see, like, and when you get to see things like the World War II monument, the Vietnam monument, uh, Korean War, um, the Korean War statue of the nurses with the guy that they did back in the 90s almost made me cry. It was probably one of the more powerful art pieces I've ever seen. Uh, the You can't explain. Well, the Vietnam War Memorial Wall is amazing. But hands down and I, I don't mean to take anything away from any of the great memorials in uh uh dc but the uh oklahoma city bombing one still is mm. one of my favorite. so but yeah no i uh washington dc deserves better than the leaders we have there you can both say democrat that i think Re- yeah both both democrat and republican or whatever yes party. anybody that's there yeah yeah I think the, anyway, uh, so yeah, took great. I really enjoyed the capital, and uh, yeah, I don't think all the assholes that live there should uh, harness it because it's still a pretty powerful place. Very cool. I I, I need to go see the. I want to see the Lincoln Memorial. That. Uh, oh yeah, that was amazing. That's yeah. just drawn me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and check out the Smithsonian. It's been a long mm. time. Yeah, we do some business with them, so I should go take a trip and see what's going on. I'll let you guys update. I have to get out, open my gates. Okay, we'll kick it off to Rawls then, because uh, he just got back from Parts Unknown, a whole other country as well. So, Rawls, welcome, my good sir. You got a sharp haircut and new shirt, and you're having a good time. How's it going, man? Yeah, no, I finally cut my hair after the winter got over. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> kind of going through the rigmarole this time of year with the ranch and stuff we everybody's turned out and of course our cattle are the only thing the wolves want to eat right now so everybody's having a hell of a time with that up here mm, um, son of a gun yeah but uh no we just got back from a trip to texas to see the kills family and um got to remind myself why I thought Texas was so miserable last time I left at 99 degrees and 90% humidity. Um, That's just it, in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, well, yeah, not to mention it's just early May, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good to see everybody. They got a nice home down there and, and uh, had a good time catching up. Got to spend uh, Kill's father's birthday and mother's day were on the same day. So we, had a little celebration and oh awesome food. that Very was fun cool. yeah and uh other than that just kind of oh barren with the weather around here we've been getting quite a bit of moisture which has been fantastic in fact we have a huge downpour right now and a massive thunder cell going over but cool um, it uh been made it a little difficult here to get the uh field work done that we got to get done for uh, heroin and rolling and whatnot and but it's just been too wet to get in the field much so which i'm really not all that disappointed about but um <laughs> yeah we're we don't have to turn any irrigation on yet because we're getting plenty of water and um it, uh, it's not a bad thing I'm gonna maybe do a little branding here brand some calves and memorial day weekend but it's kind of been mm-hmm. helping the, helping the neighbors brand and uh, other than that just uh out 
watching for wolves and keeping the cows safe. I'm sorry to be giggling so much, but I can't help but think of that old joke about the the rancher buddy decides to take his farmer buddy to town and they go to the whorehouse. Remember that one? I remind me. So they roll into the whorehouse, you know, and the, the farmer had never left the farm much. The rancher guy went to town every once in a while, but uh, he's like, well, you know, pick your woman and then, uh, you know, we'll go do our thing and we'll meet back here in the bar and have a drink or two because it's been, you know, it's been a long winter. So we deserve this. It's like, all right. So they pick their gals, you know, and they go off and do their thing. And uh, the rancher gets done and he's sitting in the bar and the farmer's not there for a while. And he's like, well, you know, Jesus, this guy's like really plowing the fields, you know. So uh, he's waiting there for a little bit. Finally, the woman that the farmer got off with comes back into the bar and he's like, hey, uh, what's going on? You know, where's my buddy? And she's like, oh, you know, you know, the freaking farmers, you know, first it was too dry. Then it's too wet. Now he's on the phone trying to get the government to pay for half. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, one, one time, well, not one time. I think it was one of the first times they had the Helix Rodeo. Uh, Ty Campbell was announcing, and I was the rodeo clown, and they made the mistake of giving our drunk asses a couple microphones. Good grief. And uh, I used that same joke uh, about all the farmers in the beer garden <laughs> ty came on and asked me how the uh how the beer is in the beer garden or how things in the beer garden are and i said oh it's like a beer garden full of farmers and i said uh, it's it's either it's too hot or too cold or it's too wet or it's too dry they're all bitching <laughs> <laughs> had a few cups of beer thrown at me yeah, that's good that's good clean yeah. fun. hey they're listening. That's good. It's yeah, interactive. Absolutely. No, no. <laughs> I told a wheat farmer joke at the Gillum County Cattlemen's Association, like my first week on the job when I worked for the cattlemen. And uh, yeah, I almost had to go into protective custody. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite wheat farmer joke is how do you know when the plane from Pendleton gets the National Wheat Growers Association? <laughs> You don't. It never stops whining. Never, that's what I thought. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, that's that's the sort of the joke I told. It's like you know, um, oh, what's the difference between a wheat farmer and a jet engine? You know, when the jet engine gets to Hawaii, it stops whining. And so that was the joke I told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of truth to that. <laughs> I told a cattleman joke at the same time too. It's not near as fast or I don't think as funny as the wheat farmer joke, but you know, the crowd was turning. So I had to do something, but I did get like the brass balls award from the, the president of the, the farm bureau at the time. He's like, dude, that took balls. That was impressive. And I was like, ah, I don't give a shit, man. <laughs> I was like the last guy to talk that night after like three state reps and like nine executive directors because it's like a big joint you know meeting and they're like oh yeah and rounding out the top 50 of the whole herd is this dude that just started with the cattlemen so here you go so they never <laughs> forgot me yeah i was in downtown condon beautiful condon that's a thriving metropolis to be sure to be sure yeah so <laughs> guess we got the new segment on far reaches this time folks is the joke hour so <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Keep going, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have a whole lot more to add that I can think of off the top of my head. Just uh, busy with Lance Henry, and he's getting to where he's about to be mobile, at least on four points. And, uh, and then tie a tire around him or something to slow him down. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's a lot of fun. He was a good little traveler to Texas and back, Kelly. He didn't complain hardly at all and he just thought everybody was there to see him because he say well yeah everybody yeah was. yeah, yeah. But. i don't i don't know if you figure this out but you're just really a transportation logistics service to get the <laughs> child to the to the grandparents that's your only real purpose yeah no that is true <clears throat> yeah i'm uh, i'm just the guy that drives and takes care of all that stuff because mom's busy nursing and taking care of him he's doing all the fun part yeah so hello to the mactomies 
got a we got a howdy on the Facebook from uh, Miss Amy. She said, uh, "My favorite people, Jimmy and Maria." So, greetings, y'all, and a good day to you. So, good to see you kicking. Well, tell her to hop on. We're missing somebody, so she can just jump in. Oh yeah, that's what we need. We need some. We need some gur. Yeah. New calf. You got a new calf? Looks like it. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> That's funny. I'm actually looking up for Amy in my phone instead of her nickname. And it's been a long day already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know I'm tired. Yeah. Like looking for somebody by their real name in my phone. There, there's my first mistake. So <laughs> uh, oh uh I uh I signed up for some uh when you when you register to vote and stuff, you know, like, hey, would you like to volunteer or help out or blah blah blah? And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I didn't think much about it, and then I I got scheduled for training, so I'm um, going to be working this next couple of elections. And like, I have this, uh, I'm checking people in when they come to vote. They have like these. Right. Florida's all connected in an electronic system, so it tells you like which. Uh, oh, that's pretty, Richard. Which yeah. precinct you're supposed to be in? Give us a tour there real quick, Rich. Well, this is one of my leases. This is Armstrong Place. They're in the back half of it. Oh, there you are. I got the, at least the solar place over there. Ah, I know where you're at. Okay. Yeah. So, I just, sometimes uh, they get into a little poison here and just want to make sure everybody was standing. There's really not much I can do if they get into poison. I just like to know if they're dead. What do you like to know? Yeah. Yeah, knowledge is power, as they say. Yeah. But looks like everybody's healthy. I think I got the right mineral in with them. So, some high mag is that what you're rolling on? Uh, real max. Well, yeah, but it's got high mag. Oh, yeah, it's got lots yeah. of magnesium. Yeah, <sighs> good stuff. Good stuff, Maynard. Yeah, so, so, anyways, yeah, so, um, all of Florida's connected. Um, when so, like, they have these things called the uh, jet pack, uh, like pumps data back to everywhere but like so i have like this computer system like bring online um so we did like a three-hour training on friday and it's called like the evt or something like that but yeah like you you check people in so you get their id and you search the system and it shows if they're registered or not and we had some redistricting thing because it happens like every 10 years i guess so there'll be some people probably in the wrong precinct but like yeah like a it's like a SWAT box with like a computer in it and a printer. And so like, if it's good, you like tear them off the slip, like go vote and be happy. If there's like a, like, Hey, you know, uh, you're in the wrong precinct or it says you've already voted or whatever, then it has like a little air slip that comes up. Um, so and then if they have, you know, change your address, they got to go talk to the clerk or then they bring you back a form and you update it. But like, yeah, everybody coming in, there's like two or three of us who just sit there and check the IDs and check them on the system and rock and roll it so come Should here jackass <laughs> joel's not on here I, yeah what the hell dude you have to yell to him on your phone not just <laughs> the dog thought he could chase one last group of cattle he thought that'd be good but that's what i figured you were yelling at was i thought either <laughs> there are a thousand yards out there i didn't want to wait for him <laughs> Does he know his name's Jackass, or is he just kind of used to like anything that's loud? Yeah, uh, answers to lots of stuff, especially uh, yeah, he's got a lot of choice names. So, Jackass yeah. is one of the milder ones. Yeah, I like that one actually. Jackass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, then um, been pimping out the back porch, you know, for like Florida life. So I got. You know, TV hung up on the wall. Got a new flat top griddle, bunch of nice uh, like outdoor chairs all scattered around. So, yeah, like this afternoon after doing some work, I was uh, floating on the pool, watching the uh, net car on the TV on the back porch. Um, just kind of enjoying the afternoon. So, uh, you know, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna be Florida man, you might as well have some of the benefits as well. So, who won? Uh, uh kurt bush i believe yeah so yeah and this and then i was back and forth because the uh 
Celtics are playing in game seven. They ended up winning as well. So that was cool. Too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, smoked a brisket yesterday. And uh, that was uh, that was tender, and juicy, and delicious. So tried a new method. Had the Weber barbecue out, you know. So it worked pretty well. Whoa, whoa. The Weber is now the new method? <laughs> Well, for me, yeah, like I usually have like a big stick burner or whatever. So like, it's called the uh, you like you put like a line of briquettes all the way around. It's called the snake, uh, and so you just like light one end of it, and it just slowly burns like all the way around, like a really slow, stupid fuse. So, oh, cool. Yeah, and you put some. I put some pecan wood on it around the whole length, and set the brisket on it, and lit that over here, and it just like worked all the way around the barbecue. And it worked about, I think, about eight or nine hours is what that went. And then I finished it off in the oven in about two and a half, three hours and let it rest for about three and then had a little nibble. So, uh, yeah, if I stacked them a little smarter, uh, made a little bit longer, I think you could go 12 hours pretty easy. So, yeah, I like to diversify my cooking. Uh, but since I got my griddle, I've not kicked, cooked in my house. And, like, uh, this will be start of week three. So, Yeah. <laughs> I mostly live out of the back porch. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So, pretty good. Well, nothing wrong with that. No, no, kind of fun. Yeah. The nice part about living in Florida. It is. Even yes. during hurricane season, I like to be outside in Florida. Oh, yeah. It's afternoon. Uh, it got dark at about four o'clock because <laughs> the storm was rolling in. Like, uh, yeah, good. Good smell, you know, some branches came out of some trees, good little bit of rotted rain. So it was a nice afternoon squall. I had flash flood warnings. I was like, sweet, this is a nice, you know, as long as you afternoon. Get to it, as long as you get your two inches a day, you bastard. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, good timing on that one. Hey oh, yeah. So oh, and then yesterday, so I I uh I got a Electric lawnmower, like battery powered, you know, and then I got a riding lawnmower I bought a couple of years ago. And I had them, I did the backyard with the battery powered mower. And then I was like, well, I decided to kind of, you know, clean it all off, hose it all off and everything. I was like, I'll back the John Deere out as well. And I haven't ran it for a while and see how she's running and clean it up a little bit. So I backed it out, cleaned it all off. It was like sitting in the sun and it looked all pretty. And I was like, I'm going to just take some pictures of that crazy thing and put it on Facebook market, see if anybody wants to buy it. Cause I don't use it that much. And uh, so that was yesterday about seven o'clock, I guess I finally got it on Facebook market and uh, at uh, one o'clock today, it sold for what I asked for it in cash. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a nice, nice lady yesterday was talking back and forth. And then she's like, uh, she was supposed to be here at 11. She's like, it's like 1045. I'm sorry. My fiance says that's too much money for something to used. And I'm like, okay. You know, it has, it literally had 198 hours on my mower, dude. Like it's like 10 years old. Like perfect. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's fine. It's like no more than 30 seconds later when she's like, sorry, it's too old. I'm like later, dude, some guy's like, Hey, uh, I'm an hour away. I'm headed that direction. You take cash. And I was just like, Yeah. I'm like, that guy's not showing up. So about an hour later, I'm like, hey, let me know when you're getting close. He's like, just pulling up, dude. Sure as hell, here comes a pickup in a trailer. And like, he was loaded for bear. He's like, looks at it, drives it around the yard. We're good. I'm like, thanks. Hands me a stack of cash, loads it up on the trailer and was gone in like 15 minutes. So like, it hasn't even really sunk in yet. Like, oh shit, I just sold my mower. Yeah, but uh... <laughs> Yeah, I I got a hundred bucks more than I paid for it like a year and a half ago. So, yeah, isn't inflation great? It is actually. Yeah, it are is. Are you replacing it or are you? Uh... Well, yeah, I have a uh, I bought a um, Ego battery mower a while ago because like my front yard is a it's really small, but b like when it rains, it gets like so mushy I can't even drive my riding mower on it. So I'd have to like weed eat it or just let it go to hell. So I got this battery powered mower last year last in like fall so i've been using it and i can do the front backyard and everything else on one battery so if i go just right so i thought what the hell so yeah bye <laughs> yeah so I'm like damn it 
who pays in cash? Now I have, I just have cash. I can't do anything with it. Like that's the weird thing. Oh, you can do stuff with cash. That I shouldn't do probably, but yes, no doubt. <laughs> like, well, damn it. Yeah. Like I don't have a bank here. Um, oh wait, I do. I had no, I opened a bank of America account when I moved here. I do have a bank anyways. Yeah. But uh, this is weird to have cash. I don't hardly ever carry cash anymore because I always get in trouble with it. So it happens. It's horrible. Look at Rawls. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Some of the best times that ever happened have was with cash. Oh, kids. Yes. My favorite line, too. Pull out a big old stack of cash. Ones or whatever. Ah, yeah. Just saw my pimp. Drinks are on me. And so... <laughs> It gets them. It gets them. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's, uh, what uh, what's on the agenda? <laughs> well, we got some comments on uh, Facebook. I thought I'd share real quick from uh, Mr. Bo. If you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Let's get that scrap cleaned up, Raleigh. He's still a few hours of daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joel, Joel's chiming in on Facebook because I think he's still finishing his dart game. I like how Richard and his dog make eye contact once in a while. I think he's just <laughs> jealous. He's never had a good dog. <laughs> Dirt bag. <laughs> he's planning on how to kill me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's like, is he in a bar? Oh, he Joel? Me today. Yeah. No, <laughs> we're talking about Joel's dog or Richard's dog and Joel. Uh, but Joel, Joel's in a bar. I think he's playing darts. He said he was on a he had a winning team or something. I thought he had darts on Tuesdays. I don't think what, he knows what, what dogs is. is he making eye contact with. Well, you probably don't want to know. Yeah, <laughs> her name's Sandy. Yeah, her name's Carla. Yeah, so <laughs> tell him large Marge sent you. So like, Richard's dog's thinking if he had fucking thumbs, he'd be driving that pickup, and Richard would be lying in a ditch somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, something fit me today when we were loading cat. How did that happen? <laughs> I told him to get down and get behind, and he was down and behind, and then he bit me in the ass. <laughs> the little bastard shot me in the ass. Yeah. Well, down and behind, he got yeah. it right. Yeah, he was just listening. You just, <laughs> you know, you listen too well. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, border collies are too smart. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. totally uh well we were you know we've been through like 19 movies we actually talked about chinatown we were supposed to do open range uh i don't even think anybody's watched any of the movies since uh, we last met i'm gonna guess but uh, all i've been watching is pinky blinders oh pinky blinders yeah yeah i didn't quite get through all that one i got to the last season and probably three episodes or four episodes left or something you know i find myself doing that because i don't want the season the the ah. Very like I have never watched the last season, of, the last episode of Longmire. Dude, that was the one I was thinking of too. I put it off forever. You should watch it though; it's good. Okay. But yeah, the, like Lawnmower, like exactly the one I was like, man, I don't want to. I'd like spread it out and wait weeks. Oh, yeah. look at the man! Look at the head on that one. You got the Lancet or something. Good God, hey, fellas, Mister oh. Joel. Let me get the things right. There you go. You scared Richard plumb out of his pickup. Now his dog's looking at us. Yeah. There's Playing the part of Richard. Richard's dog's ass. Yeah. <laughs> Raleigh, you can't tell. That's not Richard. That's his dog. Raleigh, Sorry. do your fucking whistle thing. He probably do as all ranchers can do. You know, like that. To uh, call the dog? Yeah. It, I don't, what, I'm not sure what his commands are. Yeah, if he has any, Probably, I, think good, it, I think good, good boy. I think boy. what what did he just call him a minute ago? Jackass. As I say, yelling in Irish, I think would be Richard's commands. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think a whistle would work. Hey, jackass! No, jackass! You will not drive this truck, you jackass! He's not listening to that. No, he don't listen to anybody, anyways. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Joel. How was your dart? I was, uh, was listening on my walk home. I, I noticed you chimed in. I thought that was beautiful. And uh, my my sister in law Jennifer called me. And talked, we're going on a cruise in July. Ah, oh, yeah, for mom stuff, retirement or something. 
<laughs> they're telling me all these things I need to do. I'm like, I don't know, Brian can I asked if Janet's taking the minutes and she could just send me my action items. Exactly. Like, look, hey, look, I'm not writing any of this shit down and I'm not really listening. So save your time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a busy man. This call could have been an email, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I actually was talking to Brian on the phone yesterday. Really? And, uh, wow, yeah. must have been important. Well, he, he uh, I've got a bunch of burger for sale. Ah, but, yes. Um, he called to put an order in and, and uh, he told me that he, I asked him what he was up to yesterday. He said, oh, I'm just taking the, all the kids out for a walk. And I couldn't help myself. I had to ask him if Joel was visiting, but um and, <laughs> taking me out for a walk yeah, yeah. come on joe come on yeah. he, he said no no he, he'll be here in a while and i can take him for a walk then so no that's good and go, <laughs> guys can go play in the park yeah that'd be <laughs> yeah, I, was talking to him, I said I, I need to start thinking i gotta buy a new summer pickup oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new tradition yeah where where are you going this year yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i need something to drive around might as well be a sixty thousand dollar pickup oh yeah yeah especially this year it'll, on a cruise. yeah <laughs> it'll be way more fun this year too because you know pickups are such abundance and so cheap um uh, then you should have no problem at all yeah, they're so expensive i keep i've been looking man get, I don't know. like f-150 xl was like over fifty thousand dollars. I should have just kept the pickup bed last year. I know. <laughs> I think, we, I think we told you that. There's no. The screen's probably not even colored. XL? No, it's probably like rubber floor mats and roll-up windows, man. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. That, that was. Uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. That's... Although, if anybody listens to this and has an extra. Uh, car that they want mm -hmm. to lease to me for the summer. Oh, summer lease. I might be interested. You hear that, folks? Look at Raleigh. Raleigh's got like 19 rigs. You could probably yeah. piece two or three together and get you one. That'd be a Maybe. great project for you. Raleigh has like one of those 88 Toyota two doors that like Marty McFly drove, you know? Mm -hmm. Man. You can have so my pretty... 92. You can lease my 92 Toyota. There you go. I don't know how you would deliver it up to me though in Pendleton. Probably doesn't go that far. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. I drove Dude. it to the coast all the time when I was hauling her off. Yeah. Huh. It's solid. I like I like a little bit of luxury, guys. I don't I don't know about we know. We know. It's oh, got luxury. It's yeah. got luxury. Not easy luxury. Rec I was gonna yeah. recommend my uh, 72 CJ Jeep, but oh oh that's oh, classic. That's better. Man. That's better, yeah. Dude, that's I drive, that. I drive a classic. Cool. That's like pulling out the red car. Right this is a rag top. You can take it off. No top, roll bar, the whole nine yards. Oh, look at Joel. He's next all swelling up already. He can no power himself. steering. There's no like power. My, looks like I like my women. No top. Topless? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's yellow. Like a four banger banana. and topless. Yeah. Yeah. Topless and blonde, basically, yeah. is what you're telling me. Nice. Yeah. I think Again, it's a match, match made in heaven. Can it get down the hill? Oh, it's got a bottom end. So yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll give yeah. you uh, three hundred dollars a month. Mm, no, I'm going to say you lead at least eight fifty. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Opportunity cost for Raleigh. No yeah. deal. I'll just buy a brand new GMC fifteen hundred. Okay. <laughs> for, a, for a, yeah, fifteen hundred a month. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's better than I've been throwing all my extra money into Bitcoin, and that's not working out very well. Oh, ah. I'm taking it back on that. Don't have extra money anymore. Yeah, I don't know. It's all. I'm just. I'm just. I got to get out and conclude a bike deal that I started in 19 or 2017. It's coming to conclusion. So, I'll be right back. I've lost a Camry, a brand new Camry in market value on my Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. That kind it'll, of sucks. it'll come back. Lovely. Yeah. I keep buying more every single day. There you go. Committed. I like your style. Did, 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 let me, let me, uh, let me review real quick too what Richard just said before he bailed out of the pickup. 
I've got to conclude a bike deal I started in like 1990 or something, he said, and then got in the pickup. Like, did anybody else hear that? Yeah, I, I was trying to focus on that. Well, squirrels, I guess, when you're I know. On Richard. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, I wasn't sure if he was relating to what Joel was talking about with Bitcoin or some sort of a. That's what I thought at first. It was like yeah. some kind of Richard simile kind of thing going on. But no, yeah. no, he literally stopped the pickup and got out. I think he's like beating up a dude for a bike. Uh, yeah, if like, anybody out in viewer land picked up on that, please give us an idea what. Yeah, Richard message up. me on my phone or on the Facebook page if you if you know what Richard was talking about, like. Yeah. Or if you're the dude that did a bike deal with Richard and then like maybe you know it was like ten bucks and a polar bear cheeseburger and you stiffed him on the ten bucks. I don't know. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's L Town. Like <laughs> that dude owes me money. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm seeing I'm seeing visions of the Goodwill hunting video when they yeah. jump out on the tennis court and beat the yeah. shit. Out of that guy. kid used to kick my ass in kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brad Burr hunting. I like it. That would be oh, perfect. Rich, yeah. That'd be epic. Ah, uh, Joel, what's been going on besides losing your ass in Bitcoin? Darts. Tell us about darts. I've, I've, it's been a while since I've been on this. Have I talked about darts before? Well, just briefly, but uh, I, I, <clears throat> I joined a darts league. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there's there's probably like six or seven bars in this in Brooklyn that participate. Oh, cool. And I'm on the Prospect Tavern team uh, with my boy Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Jimmy's a cool guy. Um, so there's like seven of, seven of us on the team. So, and like uh, me, Jimmy, Ellsworth, and Jess, we're all pretty good. I'm I'm the best player on the team by far. Well, there you go. Like last week, we played a game. Uh, there's 18 total points available. So you play five single five on one mm -hmm. games. Then you play two double 501 games and five single cricket and two double cricket. So there's 18 points available. Like last week, for example, we got five points and I was responsible for at all the points. <laughs> um, everyone, I don't know, I just, it, it's fun though. I, I don't know. I take things like this, like uh, I go overboard. I go practice. I practice darts every day. Mm -hmm. I bought a board for the apartment. You got but, your own darts, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been throwing money at new darts and flights and shafts. It's fucking great, man. It's a really fun game to play. I'm getting pretty good. Like, I mean, I can hit triple 20s pretty mm -hmm. regularly. Um, but I'm not nearly the best player at, at the local bar that I got to hang out in. But playing those guys get better. It's one of those games. It's like golf. It's a game. Dude, it is like I actually used to watch it on on like I was on BBC or something, but they're like they would have like dark championships on TV. Like yeah, dude, I'm going to the US packed. Masters yeah. championship at Madison Square Garden and, and oh June. sweet. <laughs> got was... We're taking a fucking party bus from the bar <laughs> to another bar where we have a three hour open bar, and then a bunch of us are going to uh, the US Masters. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, there's but like, there, there's this. ESPN once in a while. I've always oh, thought, yeah. like, who watches this shit? And it's like, oh, now I dude, watch it. Dude, I was all over it. Like, there's a, like a big ball dude would like announce 180. Like, he was like, it was awesome, dude. I've never gotten a 180. I've gotten 140s. Yeah. I've gotten two triples and a single 20, but I've never never hit the 180 yeah he he would just love to yell out the 180 like there's people in the crowd with freaking signs and like his chaos and i was like what the what the crap like it was awesome like he would the, the guy announcing was was really what made it a lot too so yeah so i've been doing that a lot and then uh last weekend big thing we went down to kentucky for a, a wedding mm -hmm. and, and but we spent we flew into nashville and then drove up two and a half hours to a town called bardstown Mm -hmm. which is the bourbon capital of 
well, the world, but the U.S. because you can only make bourbon in the U.S. Um, and we went to so we went to a, a few distilleries. Took a tour of one of them, and then so we went to Preservation Willet. And I can't remember the other one, but uh, you know you see how they make it. Kind of, they're not very knowledgeable, but. One place we went, they had like a one ounce pour for 350 bucks for one ounce of like a 1960 something, 28 year bourbon. Oh, wow. How was I it? I didn't get it. Oh. I was like, I need Junior here to order this for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but dude, Kentucky was cool. Like um, a lot of places that you go on to travel, like a lot of times the locals don't like you. Mm. They don't it's want, just you. Yeah. They don't want outsiders in town. Sure. It's not just me. Okay. <laughs> but Kentucky, like, dude, everyone was super friendly. Um, I loved it. It was, it was a really good time. Uh, awesome, what dude. You, oh, the wedding itself was like, eh. Yeah, but sort of, a, yeah, you were there. You might as well enjoy it while you were there. Yeah, I only went because it was in Kentucky. Like, if it was in Indianapolis, like, I'm in the past. I don't yeah. want to go to the stupid wedding in Indiana. Uh, but Kentucky, yeah. And it was the same weekend as the uh, Derby. So there's a whole bunch of people in town. Oh, for, yeah, that's right. For the Derby. I stayed at, uh, the little hotel we stayed in was, uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but Abe Lincoln stayed there when he was a child. Wow. Very historic area. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I wish it went down there, but and it was Very small cool. town, only like 10,000 people. That sounds fun, though. Uh, what else have been doing? That and darts and thinking about buying a new pickup for the summer. That's about sure. it. Not bad. Not bad. Or a Jeep. What's that? Or a Jeep. I was thinking oh. maybe a two door Jeep Wrangler. Ah. So might be kind of fun. Get you one of them Gladiator Jeep pickups. Yeah. I think those are fucking hideous looking. I think if they're pimped out, they look pretty sweet. Stock, they look awful, but I see them around here all the time running around like on 38s and it looks pretty nice. You pimped out like yellow with flames on it? No, it's just like, like usually they're blacked out, lifted, and like 38s or 40s. Like looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I'm just saying. Now that and, uh, so we talked about Bitcoin, taking a bath on that. Uh, yeah, that's my life, man. Wow. Hey, Richard, when you get off mute, we got to find out what happened with the bike. We're not quite sure what you talked about. It sounded like you were jumping out to go beat down somebody that owed you like 10 bucks for a bike from like sixth grade. So we're just curious. Then you're on mute in case you didn't know. Richard's got his red solo cup in the front room i don't know richard's just walking around like richard i don't think he i think he forgot he's on a podcast i think that's my guess he's probably coming home and he's like woman of the house where's my supper let me tell you a thing or two about what i expect when i return home woman yes i want the boy fed and cleaned and down for bed the dogs all put away and my supper should be ready <laughs> I just got a tornado warning for New York City tomorrow. Oh, kinky. For tomorrow? Yeah. Wow. Action News 5 is on the scene. That's impressive. Starting tomorrow around 2 o'clock, there's threat of severe thunderstorms, damaging wind and hail, and isolated thunder tornado cannot be ruled out. Ooh. Well, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Can't be ruled out. Like, what, what great language is that? Like, if if you've had a big ass thunderstorm, you can't rule out a tornado. Like it could happen. Uh, but you're talking yeah. about it. So is that on Twitter? Uh, no, they gave me an emergency text message. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. <clears throat> as soon as we get to so, anybody been watching Twitter? What do you think about that? There's so many cool things we've like that's gone on. Like not necessarily cool things. There's a lot of random shit that's gone on in the past few weeks that we've not been online for, but. Uh, I don't even know where to begin between the Supreme Court stuff, between baby food, between Twitter. 
uh, I don't know what else is going on. There's a whole shit ton of other stuff going on also. So much bizarre <laughs> shit. But it's like number one with Twitter. The most fascinating thing is the articles that are like the Washington Post being like, here's why billionaires shouldn't own media. <laughs> like, yeah, they're owned by Jeff Bezos. Fucking yeah, ass. Yeah, like, like. <laughs> number two, uh, <laughs> with the abortion thing, like I actually took the time. It took probably took me three hours. I actually read the entire like document. I don't mm-hmm. know what percentage of people commenting on it have done that. Probably not many. I would say less than five. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know a whole lot about the previous ruling, but I'm a, I am support people if they want to get an abortion. Go, I don't care. Go get an abortion. But it doesn't really sound like it has a place in the United States Constitution. It doesn't really yeah. it doesn't fit. I'm sorry, guys, but you can't use the document just because you think, well, we want to do this. So let's put it in that. It doesn't work like that. Kind of pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking about, um, well, I don't remember what state it was, talking about like abortion after birth, like, or up until, like, like that doesn't really seem like abortion anymore. That's plain old. Like, better be careful. I'm going to fucking abort you. Yeah, exactly. Like, like sorry. Yeah, like, I've had enough of your shit, mister. Yeah, I'm just going to like pull up a like, tree shredder pulls up to my house tomorrow. I know what's going on. So, Did your mom ever tell you, like, uh, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Yeah, that was that was bad idea. Only a couple times. Yeah. It was more more in jest, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> Rawls, what do you think, brother? Get, get some, you just came back from Texas, too. What's going on in that brain of yours? Not a whole lot. Um, I didn't pay real close attention to the whole Twitter bullshit because I really don't give a fuck. But um, the <laughs> I think that's a lot of people, really. I just think it, I just think it's funny to watch people just get absolutely spun out over something like that. Yeah, our our media and politics are such a sham, but. Um, and I really honestly didn't take, pay a whole lot of attention to the whole uh, Roe versus Wade quote unquote ruling, which sound as I understand it was an early leak. I think it's, it's more, a, of a, yeah, it's a I think it's more of a more of a publicity stunt going into an election cycle than anything. But um, nailed it. Yeah. So it uh, it's just typical media and politics again. So it, the, both of them are a waste of your time to pay attention to, really, and at this point. But it's entertainment value. It's like really bad, really personal reality TV. Yeah, it's just just more hogwash to waste your time with. So word. Yeah. With Twitter, I think, man, I think it's really important what he's doing. I think it's easy to overlook it, but what Elon Wait. Musk is doing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to discredit the fact that he is, is probably doing a great thing for our First Amendment. Um, and that what Twitter and other social media platforms have done to our First Amendment, I think is bullshit. But um, on the same note, <laughs> it's not going to stop, but it's going to continue. I mean, as long as they don't agree with what you have to say, you're going to get shut off or canceled or whatever. The Ministry of Misinformation or whatever it's called. Yeah. Like that, that, that's seriously concerning there. And, and, that doesn't and, make your hair stand up. I'm sorry. Until society normalizes their ability to, uh, or puts them in a normal space and quits utilizing those platforms for for their daily crap. You can't. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to sit here and, and look at. We give them too much credit. Period. If if we if we continue to use them and and they continue to do what they do on their platforms to to uh, do what they do, there's nobody to blame but ourselves. Quit using them, assholes. I mean especially how we do now like that's not opinion i mean that's like not a pulse of the country um yeah. 
that's been proven well musk said he got it he got served for violating an nda by telling how many bots were on twitter a lot like half of biden's followers are bots according to something i read <laughs> like, still 200 000 to obama's were yeah yeah I heard 5% numbers like thrown around a lot. 5% of the accounts on Twitter are bots. And so, mm-hmm. so Musk is going back to, I don't know if he's going to, but he's going to threaten to like the company was overvalued because their disclosures were inaccurate. Mm-hmm. So we could re- renegotiate instead of 44 billion, maybe you get it for like 38 billion. Yeah. Save a little Which pocket, still- pay, you know? I wonder Pretty how smart. they value a user. Ah, it's a great. There has to be like a tremendous algorithm based on that. I'm sure it's based on their followers, their activity, but everyone has a baseline. I'm sure. I think I bet you Elon Musk has something else in mind. I think you could look at Twitter being like eyeball is worth twenty cents a day or something. He's already yeah. talked about having a, like government and somebody like government and somebody else pay for the service. That was one of his earlier. I heard that thrown out as an idea, but mm-hmm. ultimately he's going to take it private, get it out of the market. Then you don't have to fuck around with board of directors, and you can redeploy Twitter. Kind of, I don't know. What would you do with it? Like. You, there's so much you could do with it. You could like you could segregate it. Like, do you want to look at Democrat Twitter, Republican Twitter, sports Twitter, Black Twitter, uh, Karen Twitter? I think, uh, I think it inadvertently should be it, that way, anyways. But just like by who you follow and who you go search for, it could like, literally be like the new Google. It's like the new interface of it's like the Wikipedia, Internet. Wikipedia it's Live. Free. I don't know. And integrate. Bitcoin into it. Uh, he, Whatever. Yeah. He's, 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 not, bro- he's so he's, brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's not he's buying going, it just for this noble cause. Let's not fool ourselves here. Yeah. Like, he's not I going mean, to, it's not going to be the same Twitter. He's going to do no, something. With and that's it. fine. I think it'll be something we never even consider. Yep. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll blow our minds. I'm sure it'll be a couple of years from now. I'm like, oh, that bastard, because he's going to sell it at like $90 a share. Um, so go public again, like uh, Dell did. Mm hmm. He hates being he he hates his company as being public. Like he wanted to mm-hmm. reprivatize Tesla. I mean, it's not going public anytime soon. It doesn't seem like, according to just the things he said. I don't think he's going to take SpaceX public. Mm-hmm. He's, what, what, Neuralink isn't even close to being ready, but he probably won't want to do that with that. Go public with Neuralink. Uh, but dude, if SpaceX ever went public like i'm gonna call my 401k and put all my money in spacex yeah because it actually works yeah i think that the thing is that like the thing that blew my mind is when i was told that that tesla isn't about the cars it's about the operating platform like that's where all the value is the cars are just to prove the computer program so yeah well the technology behind it with like the yeah so anyways that means that Twitter, if he looks, if he sees, if he sees Tesla as a uh, as a platform to sell software, then he's got to see. He must have some angle on Twitter that's going to make him a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I'd say it has to do with all the data that Twitter's um, combined, and then like really nothing beats Twitter for. Uh, like when the Ukraine war broke out before they started, before they can control it, and it was just like this free flow of information. You can't really beat Twitter for that like initial mm-hmm. crisis point and getting information out. So Twitter has some amazing values, and I think that it's just not. I think what he's gonna turn, what he's gonna show, what value he's gonna mine out of Twitter is, will be. Uh, I don't know if we can see it yet, but. There's probably some people out there that already know what's going to happen, but yeah, I think that Twitter will probably save pretty much the same. But um, yeah, and then you got you got to remember that uh, Peter Thiel, his former partner, owns Peloton. Mm. So Tie those together. It, yeah, it's completely like 
how Todd could sift through everything that's happening in real time on Twitter and like pick out um, patterns that humans can't even see. So like Palton's the software that helped find Bin Laden. So yeah, I know you're Palton, like bicycles. Pal Palantir, Palantir. Yeah, Palantir. That's the one. Oh, Palantir. Okay, Palantir. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, yeah, you put that with that. You combine those two. Those two, Teal and Musk have worked together before, and then you have something really interesting. So. And it'd be infinitely power, more powerful than the government, the NSA, and uh, it would really piss them off. And both Musk and Teal like to piss off the government. So we could be in for a fun ride. Especially if you tie that with his satellite system. Yeah. So like... people... They're just so crazy, though. Like, all the, the backlash of it is like, they just admitted out loud. Oh, yeah. They is over like well free speech we can't have just completely free speech guys yeah we have to we have to say what's free or not and you're like what that yeah like that's the whole like if nothing else like he doesn't think about this he's not bought it yet just by coming to a deal they've completely said who they are and what they're what they've been doing like yeah you could just actually like say fuck you guys and walk away and they could just they could die like if he really wanted to, I think he could kill it. Well, and, the whole apparatus suddenly rises up against him. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. he's being investigated for all sorts of things now because the government is like, we don't want this is threatening to the government as well. It should be, yeah. Trouble of information. You got Nina Jankowicz or whatever her name is uh, from the yeah. Ministry of Truth and. Yeah. She's on a Zoom being like, people check mark like me. I should be able to go in there and add context to other people's tweets to make sure you know what's true. Like, <laughs> you fucking bitch. I love that. Yeah, like we, we do. Oh dude, yeah, that's the thing, is like they're completely disconnected from reality. Like literally, like, obviously, if I think it that it's the truth. And I'll give you context. So you, you poor disenfranchised, you know, idiot. I mean, let me enlighten you. You know, like the whole, the, what is it called? We call it the ministry, but it's like something about disinformation or whatever. Like the board for disinformation or something. That, that, it truly sounds like something the Babylon Bee would make up um, uh, two years ago, and now can't it's, they can't they understand the timing though? Like I, you, oh you, dude. Of course, people are thinking conspiracy theories when you have starts with COVID, right? Well, it starts with, yeah, it starts with COVID. Most sane people are looking at COVID being like, I don't, I think this is disproportionate response to the threat that this mm -hmm. virus actually poses. And that gets shut down repeatedly. Any diverging mm -hmm. opinion from the mainstream narrative from Fauci and Walensky and the World Health Organization, they shut that down quickly. So that's suspicious one. There's like four things, just one after the other. If you would have like go pre-COVID time and like the Department of Homeland Security is like, we're setting up a disinformation. Yeah. Thing. What? No, guys. Like, well, we, we don't need it. It's okay. Like this is how we've got to this point in our history is open and frank discussion and, and discord and you talk it through um like clarence thomas i was i saw an interview on twitter yesterday from him and he was talking at some law school thing and he's like when i went to university even though my university doesn't even claim me anymore when i went to university it was all about open expression and we would discuss <laughs> ideas and disagree and talk through with, with your friends like we were still friends you know we would talk about different things and have different points of view and that's what it was all about like learning new points of view challenging your beliefs challenge other people's beliefs like it's completely opposite now in this short amount of time it's gone completely opposite where if you're not with the agreed upon story then then you're going to get drummed out or you know killed yeah it sounds like it sounds like yale i think the majority yeah. of yale law school students would are would support just trashing the constitution mm -hmm. over and come up with a new thing 
Or and, the girl that they the girl they think leaked the Supreme Court documents was they yeah. from you. Or I haven't heard anything about it. They, they think they know who did it. Oh, well, they had a pretty good idea, like day one. Yeah. But they're not gonna do anything about it. Like oh. well, I wouldn't say that. It is the Supreme Court. Like yeah. bottom line, bottom line is people I even talk I talk I have friends at the at, like when I go play darts or mm-hmm. like, I'm in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Like most people, ninety percent of the people are fucking left wing liberals. Sure, fine. I'm friends. They're nice, and but once in a while, I'll get in a discussion with them, and I'll have to be like, I'm kind of a Republican. <laughs> they're like, oh, what do you think about such and such? And they're not mean to me or anything, but just even those people, they think mm-hmm. that, like, well, it, the Constitution was written by a bunch of landowning old white guys hundreds of years ago. It's why we, we need to get rid of it. Like, it, the only bottom line, if you want to get rid of it, that you have, the only way you can do that is through a civil war. Yeah, You can't just be like, because there's going to be people like, no, you can't do that. You're going to look for a hundred percent consensus to just get rid of the constitution. Like, no, there's going to be like 40, 50 percent of people, maybe more, that do not well, want to do a that. lot more. And then you have I to fight a war against them. Are you guys ready to do that? I think everybody's learning this couple last couple of weeks just how many people's voices are being suppressed mm-hmm. because it was a lot more than everybody thought it was. So I think the silent majority is, uh, um, not as small as every my mi- silent minority is not as small as everybody think it thought it was. So yeah, no, not at all. You know, it, it, you know, I, I've said it a hundred times. Like we are not perfect, but we're still one of the absolute best places on the entire planet to be. No doubt about it. Don't doesn't matter if it was only old white dudes that came up with this whole constitution and the freedom and everything else that we have. Like. Look at it on its merits, not who made it. Like, again, you're being racist just by talking about it. Just like, oh, old white dudes made it so nobody else was taken into consideration. It wasn't perfect, but I think it's it's the by far the best outline for freedom and growth and individualism that has ever been charted in this entire world, no matter who made it. Um, you know, so just because somebody that's not you came up with it doesn't mean it's not a good idea. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, like, Look at what it's doing, not who made it. What's the point of that? That's ridiculous. I wanted to, I wanted to know if you guys caught the uh, David Jinren, Jin, Jer, Jergen, David Jergen, uh, his new book. No. Anyways, it's quite the. It's been quite the. Uh, it's made quite the football. He goes, baby boomers have been running the country for over three decades. Some successors, a number of disappoint, some successes, and a number of disappointment. It's time to pass the baton on to younger generations, millennials and Gen Z. Please join us in the conversation tonight. Anybody I, see anything wrong with that statement? Uh, they're only asking Gen Z to join. Millennials. Mm-hmm. Gen Z. Boomers to millennials to Gen Z. Totally left out Generation X. Oh, yeah. I'm not familiar with all the generations, so that was my downfall. But yeah, I agree. We are X, aren't we? We are X. Joel and well, Raleigh. Boomers are... to Gen... I think they meant boomers through Gen Z. Right? No, they did it. No. There's a bunch of... There was a bunch, they, on the CNN thing, they purposely let out... They let out... They On the... You can see on the... Uh, Somebody screenshotted the uh, how they broke down the generations, and it goes the silent generations, nineteen twenty eight to nineteen forty five. Boomers are nineteen forty six to nineteen sixty four. Millennials are nineteen eighty one to nineteen ninety six. Most millennials are nineteen ninety seven to two thousand or to present. So completely left out. Let me see. Twenty three years, <laughs> which I happen to be pretty fond of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like it, it's kind of an embarrassing thing to be a part of the, the millennial generation. I, I, go ahead, Ross. 
Richard, what's your opinion on why that was left out? We're the smallest. We're the, we're smaller than the boomers by almost half. Or is it and perhaps the fact that we were the last truly educated bunch? We're the biggest pain in the asses, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're that we're kind the, of the hybrid where, like, I know what the Dewey Decimal System is, and I can read a book, but I can also run the internet. Yeah. So. I know cursive. I know math. Like that like the one we watch, we the watch math. Active. You guys were never active. What's that? You guys never like. You guys were never active. You, no, we were totally not. You never like went out picketing and and stuff. You yeah, know what I mean? Good. Yeah, you guys are just quiet and accept and do what you're supposed to do, I guess. But. I don't know. To a certain I wouldn't extent. go that far. No, we did our own thing and like didn't get involved in some stuff. Like that's why all the school boards are completely screwed over and things like that. Because we're not we're not really good cooperators. Yeah. Well, Richard, what's the unique characteristics of a Gen Xer? Uh, we're the first ones to come of age, and uh, we're first ones. We'd be the first generation to get emails. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I got emails. We were the I first. I got a millennial told. I didn't know millennial tell me I had an old G Gmail account. And he's like, this is amazing. And I said, what? Your email. I said, R-A-C-B-R-A-D-B-R-Y at Gmail. He goes, yeah. He goes, you can tell how old a Gmail address is by if you can have your name and your last name in it with no numbers. <laughs> I said, yeah, when I got by it, I had to get an invite. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah I Mike, uh, to... yeah what's your what's yours oh i'm um the Micah wells at gmail yeah no numbers no numbers no yeah. no uh yeah i used to one of my one of my old yahoo accounts was mw8487 but that's just because that spells tits on the phone remember <laughs> uh that was our phone number, 962-8487. And you're the one that, like, you came home one day or something. You're like, dude, do you guys realize that our phone number spells tits? And so, like, yeah. sites. I found a website on the computer that you've typed your phone number into, and then it tells you what day, what it spells out. So, that in the grand, there was 962 and 963 prefixes, but nobody could ever remember if we were 962 or 963, but they could all remember it was tits when they were trying to call the house. Yeah. <laughs> because... I met the woman who had the other number. <laughs> like we were, I was, the, she worked at the, that soup uh, kitchen upstairs in Max. And like, I went to get oh. soup and a sandwich one day. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And she's like, what's your name? I'm like, Micah. And she's like, Micah, my name is Dawn. My phone number is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I like a gal who's not afraid to play hard to get. And she's like, does that sound familiar? And I'm like, hey, that's my phone number. I'm like, do you know what your phone number spells? And she's like, then I'm like, oh, so you probably get a load of phone calls for our house, don't you? She's like, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I like that joke. She said her phone number. You're like, I like a girl that doesn't play hard to get. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, well, sorry. <laughs> She's like, it's all right. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah. So, because like, nobody had cell phone. We just had the house phone. But anyways. Yeah, that was beautiful. I was going to say that Generation X is also the only generation that's been alive for all the recessions, minus the Great Depression. Ah, yes. We have that unique thing. Yeah, let's yeah. Not see a graph, and it looks like Gen X has been royally screwed over the history of the economy, right? We just, not, we just don't have the numbers, so we're not that important. It happens. We don't, I don't care what their opinion is anyways. But I don't know. I, like X and millennials, they're more similar than the boomers are the problem. Right? They have all the all the real estate and then they throw their hands up and complain when their real estate price goes down 10% and they get bailed out. And then the uh, well, I'll go back to the previous statement that there, you know, there's no freaking reason that people who are in their 80s should be in Congress. Okay, sorry, you've you've done served your time. You may go now. 
Yeah, how embarrassing is it when those just so gross uh, two separate groups of Congress people went to Ukraine? Yeah. And one of them was McConnell. Mm-hmm. His stupid fucking chin. The turtle. Yeah. God, I hate that guy. I do too. Um, and then the other group. You know, they're over. They, they all look so pathetic. It's awful. They're over there it's trying awful. to get us into a war that nobody wants to be in. Right. Ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah. I think, who was it? When uh, I saw that picture, I was pissed off. Oh, dude. I don't, don't want to be in it, but we're in it now. That's the, it's so fucked up. We are in this war. There's a war going on that nobody agreed upon. And it's like, oh, we're fighting Russia now. They're gonna, yeah. they're gonna get us all killed. Like, well, did they didn't they stop the 40 billion that was supposed to be going there? No. Did it actually go through? It hasn't gone through yet, but Rand Paul introduced uh, an amendment yeah. to it to have oversight of the spending, and there's a lot of pushback on that. Yeah, which they I think don't, is- they don't even want any oversight on how this these funds are spent. Uh, it passed. No, no, I'm think, I'm getting that conflated with the abortion thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think I think it's gonna pass because most. Most Republicans are on board with it. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Like, and there's a long list, but yeah, it, it's it, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, that brought us all the silence. Like, that does not happen very often. We're all just like, Dang. like if you were in the military, would you? At what point does like somebody in the military say like I, I texted you about this, Mike, and you never responded to it? Actually, I guess I didn't see it. No. Like I don't know. Like if you're in the military, you do what you're told, I suppose. But does it? Do they push you to a point where you, in mass, they'll say no? Yeah. It's it's rich pe- rich influential people sending kids, basically kids into a war. Get us into a war. Yeah. No, that's and I don't get it. I mean, I'm trying to figure out all I can figure is that they're so panicked about the inflation that they want to get us into a war to get their ass out of the sling they're in. I I well, just don't I mean that'd be one thing. I mean, or is it they're so panicked about the negative outcome of their failed pandemic policies and mandates that to distract us. They want to get us into a war. They're going to focus on <clears throat> the abortion thing. They're going to focus on this fucking guy in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Shut up the grocery store. There's more white supremacy. There's. I heard there was more FBI behind that dude. Does anybody know uh, that? Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about that. No. Yeah. Yeah, he was radical. So far, I've heard that he was also radicalized by the FBI. And normally, he would have been a nice person, but he was egged on by agents of the FBI and uh, indoctrinated to their bullshit thing they do with all those people. So at this point, who's guilty? The guy that was dumb and got radicalized that was mentally unstable or the FBI? And why do we have the FBI anymore if this is all they're capable of doing? They are like the, the you know, they're the covert arm of the Democratic Party, basically. So Jeez, not so covert God. anymore. Yeah, that's about the most pathetic. I mean, it's terrible that guy went and killed 10 people. But it's also terrible that our taxpayer money funded to have him brainwashed. I think that's the most, that's the mm-hmm. most egregious thing of that whole thing. 10 people are dead because the FBI wanted to radicalize somebody so that they could catch a terrorist. Yeah. Just like the the governor uh, kidnapping ploy that was in was that Michigan yeah. that basically turned out it was ninety nine percent the FBI. Yeah, well, they have to justify like the statement that Biden himself is saying. They like, keep saying like uh, white supremacy, white supremacy is the greatest threat to mm-hmm. America. Like, come on, that's just not, not reasonable. Not even close. I, no. I think the greatest threat to America is their politicians. 
That is a fact. Hundred percent. Absolute fact. No, I, mean, I, mean, I think in, America's the bad guys. It, well, in in regards to um, the war in Ukraine, you if you look back over our last twenty years since nine eleven, and look at the privatized industry that war has created and sit there and tell me that there isn't a freaking politician tied somewhere to the privatized military mm. industry and then they come up with their own bill to send 40 billion dollars to ukraine they're just trying to pad their pockets again i'm sorry this, no this doubt is, about it this is taxpayer money going overseas to pay for all the the bullshit that they're trying to the illusion that they're creating with us mm -hmm. yeah a should be sending out money out the door when we're we're in some of the worst shape we've been into in a long time like that sending 40 billion somewhere else does not help that oh there's nothing all. they would love more than to break our country well i know yeah it's a fact um no you know borders are important in ukraine but we don't need one here in the u.s you know let me let me let me talk through that one for a second let me get my brain around that little factoid yeah yeah, and why aren't like congressmen should be audited like quarterly? Like we should see their tax returns. Like, yeah, they're public servants. Like, nobody should go in like worth a hundred grand and come out worth a hundred million. Like, it's not it's not legal. That should not be going on. If they have investments, it should be like in a blind trust, just how the president's goes into. Seriously, like it. It used to be people like Obama when he ran for president. He was the one senator one of the few senators that voted against going to war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. That was like a virtuous thing. And now, so that was like a far, it used to be like a left-wing thing. Now it's like AOC on the right, for example, and all the, and the squad. They are they fully support this forty billion dollar extra payment to Ukraine to fight another war. The so, I can't admit, maybe I'm fucking crazy, but if Afghanistan, we couldn't beat Afghanistan. How are we no, going to beat? It's absolutely ridiculous. It's power not, in Russia. It's not what? us, man. It should not be there. What was there to win or to beat, though, Joel? It's it has nothing to do with actually an achievable mm -hmm. um, thing it, it, it's the the war machine in itself is not we don't just have the the army and the navy and the marines and the air force anymore you've got blackwater you've got all these privatized industries within and by essentially what trump was doing by taking us out of it and mm -hmm. you <clears throat> there's a lot of people suffered and that was easy money for them. And so that they don't think there's not a lobby, a lot of lobbying pressure to reopen those floodgates of taxpayer money. I mean, if you, if you follow the money trail, the, every stinking politician has one that comes mm -hmm. right back to them. So. Yeah. It should be open audits. Like there should never be any question, man. Like it's, yeah. it should be part of the deal. Like, yeah, we understand you want to go be part of this public service, but, as a condition to that, we're going to release your quarterlies yeah. every freaking quarter because people have the right to know. Yeah, it's some of the craziest times. We always say that. I think this is very, very true now. But I do think also that more and more people are are waking up to the fact that it's just complete freaking lunacy. Um, and I don't, I don't think America is going to be distracted too by – by the you know by the ukraine thing by baby food shortages by this you know the supreme court leaking like i think people are truly upset about how things have been going this past couple of years i think they're going to get out and vote i think the drove i think it's going to be we'll see how the elections turn out my biggest fear is you're going to get a bunch of freaking slack jawed rhino republicans back in there anyways and it's just yeah. gonna be the same exact thing um but you know, I know there's some people making some differences in some places, but God, I don't want any more freaking Mitt Romney's. I would, going back to the Generation X's, and I, I truly believe that the Generation X era are the greatest 
um, the not only the greatest, but the the youngest <clears throat> generation of independent thinkers, and that is what is so. I don't, in my opinion, that, that for, from a governing standpoint, having independent thinkers is not a good thing. And <laughs> no. <laughs> and but the, the the reality of the situation is is if you take a look around they're creating people to become more independent thinking and yeah and, and it's that, the consequences that, that fact alone is really going to bite them in the ass in november i think but to micah's point are we just going to get another handful of jerk off politicians in there there'll be a there'll be a pile i think but i know there's some folks out there i think that are a little more like normal if you will or like people who are like look this is bullshit um they're probably going to get um ran over but i think they're also making some pretty good strides so i, don't I know think if they don't get called racist yeah. i i personally think that it's due time that uh i mean we're all busy out here we all have but mm -hmm. if if you've got good people in mind that would would be good public servants to be put into those places um, and and that are going to be independent thinking and not going to get bought up by all the mm -hmm. lobbyist money that's out there. I, it's time for people to stand up and go go take a role in office that it was supposed to be and meant for. And and granted, there's not term limits, but I don't know. I think I think if it were me, I'd want to go and then I'd want to come back. You know, I don't I don't want to get back there and get wiped wiped up by that stuff but if you've got good people in mind and I, I i know money speaks in today's political world but it we need more just good wholesome people back there i think once if the rains truly come off some social media things and a, and a good honest i'm not going to say conservative but also like independent thinking person can run for office and utilize social media i, I think you can outwork the established machine in a lot of these places. And I think we're seeing some of that. Um, I've seen some interviews on, on Tucker and around, um, Richard, who's the guy that wrote Hugh Billy elegy. JD Vance. He's not yeah. Around. Yeah. He won his primary. There's another dude in Arkansas. Like they, they intentionally misspelled or like, I won't say intentionally. They totally misspelled his name, uh, from like Jack to Jake or something. And then like, they knew about it. And they still didn't change into the ballots. And then so he freaking sued them. And now they have to change them all anyways, because they knew like a month and a half in advance. Um, because he wasn't the, you know, the chosen one from the Republican side. So I think we're gonna continue to see some of that stuff, you know. Like it's really small, but like I mentioned earlier, like I'm working the elections this year here, like running the machines, checking people in, like decided to get started and start doing something local, uh, anyways. And it's I'm like, you know, that's not like a congressman thing was like i'm getting involved in the system like i learned a whole shitload of stuff the other day about how elections work around here like in the three-hour training so i think having that knowledge um we lost richard and he's coming back um it's just part of it getting getting involved in some way shape or form to joel's point yeah. earlier i think uh it's been interesting to watch and i, I call it out early on because i knew exactly what would happen i call it out to my aunt so <clears throat> but early on with DeSantis was when Florida made the decision we're not going to shut down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this guy is special. And I'm like, he's going to be attacked so hard for mm -hmm. the next few years because he is the front runner. He's got to be the, one of the front runners for president sure. for the next cycle. And so they're going all out on this guy to try to make him a villain and he's like a smart version of Trump or whatever they're going to, how are they going to paint? They're trying to figure out how they're going to paint him. But you can see how it's ramping up in the news. Like, they, like he is, to me, he seems like a very principled guy. I, I don't know. Maybe he has like his own little things with like uh, outside money and influence, but it doesn't seem like it. I don't think seems so. Like, it's pretty, I mean, like, kind of gets to the point like if they could find anything i think they would have drug it up by now like they they tried to get him hung out to like when they were establishing covid uh, vaccine stations and like Publix was one of the first ones to get it and they're like oh that's because yeah. you got donations from Publix. he's like 
Well, of course I got donations from yeah, Publix. Um, minutes, ran a whole hit piece segment yeah, and it was absolute sure. bullshit. And he shredded their weed over it too. And he's like, you know, so I think he's willing to like kick it right back in the nuts. I think part of it, like that, that, that was this blatant lie. It's what they were talking about uh, trying to position him as being in the public. And it's like, Do it's you not even remotely Chris, what's going on. Uh, Christina Tonshaw, is that her name? His spokesperson. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That young, she's actually Ukrainian, I think. Yeah. His um, attorney general or um, surgeon general is a pretty cool guy, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, all these people just get hammered, though, by the national well, media on a daily they basis. Get, they keep trying. They don't, get, they don't get hammered as long as they defend themselves and not apologize. Mm hmm. Never apologize, like ever, yeah. ever. Don't do the walk. Don't do the Chinese walk of shame. Just, yeah, like Joe Rogan came right back at him, and uh, Santos comes back at him. I'm trying to think of some of the other people, but the guys that like say, "Yeah, I know what you're doing. F off. This is my reasoning behind it, and mm -hmm. uh, you have a good day." Yeah. <laughs> but the ones that the once you apologize, you're shit out of luck. You're done. What if, like Drew Brees said something a couple years ago about the flag, or I don't know what people lost their fucking mind and he started apologizing. And I was like, no, you're dude, you're so screwed. Why would you ever do that? Like it's never enough for one. And B, you're just appeasing them to make them feel better about themselves. It's not to do anything with what you actually said. Yeah. Do you think uh, I, I I'd rather I'd much rather have DeSantis than Donald Trump the next president? But I don't. Donald Trump is probably going to run. He How might. Do you... I hope he doesn't. Actually, I think he's just much. I think he's much better at just fundraising and getting people out for people. Like, what's he like? Forty nine out of fifty, or something like that, or fifty out of fifty for people he's endorsed in the primaries that have won. Like it's it, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think you should run again. Um, but they're really gonna step up the rhetoric on somebody like this. Is they're gonna try to call, claim he's a white supremacist and racist? And I don't think it will. Yeah, I don't think it'll be DeSantos. I don't. Think I don't. I don't want to lose him from Florida, to be honest with you. But I don't Wait, think really? we have. It'll be him. I don't think we have any idea who's going to be the Democrat nominee or the Republican nominee. I think right it's now. going to be, I think we're going to get Tulsi Gabbard's going to come over to the conservative Republican side. Maybe. I think she's going to run as a Republican. She's doing something. I don't know if she's going to run herself in a third party or what she's going to do. I don't she's know. Not, she's blocked from the Democratic Party. She knows Andrew that. Andrew Yang started the forward party. I, I, I like Andrew Yang. I don't like his universal income idea but uh, i think he's a great guy I, as a person i think he's probably great i don't like the universal income thing but i think he's just trying to appeal to too many people i think it's his problem and not the right ones yeah but tulsi would be great i love tulsi i dig her i see her on fox all the time she did obviously they don't always agree but i think she's willing to like you know where she stands that's the most important thing like just tell me what you think and you believe that's all anybody really wants to know I think, no. I, think, I think the label of Democrat and Republican is like useless, becoming more useless. The is like, oh, dude, yeah, so much. They're just they're wearing the same exact maybe, suit. I, I am a Tulsi Gabbard Democrat. There you go. I like her. I, I am a Ron DeSantis Republican. I like both of those people. Remember the old? Here's how I equate politicians right now. Remember the old Looney Tunes cartoon? It was the sheepdog and like the coyote or the wolf. That they they uh, they would walk up. They would like morning Sam, morning Ralph, good friends. They would clock in, and then they were like battling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, they like clock out. That's how I see so politicians. Now. Like the yeah, yeah, hair. just had like all hair, and he would just like sit there the whole time. You know, like their job was to be enemies, and that's exactly how I see politicians now. Like it's just they're like they're not really different. They just happen to be on the other side of the aisle, so to speak. But they're not really different. Like most of them are not. They're just going in, punching in, battling, punching out at the end of the day. And you know, they're all on the exact same page on most everything. I truly believe that. I didn't used to. There's no way I like, did not at all. But that's how I see it. 
I'm gonna run for office. If I ever run for office, we have to delete all of these podcasts. No, no, this is why we're gonna get elected. <laughs> I uh, I heard a uh, Hotep Jesus on Joe Rogan when I, today when I was hauling cattle, and uh, said something that really sort of struck it with me. And don't get offended because this is not a statement about everybody, but I think he's pretty close to the truth on politicians. He's like, Republicans have three issues mm. and the ones that are the politicians aren't very smart and they just really good at selling those three issues. And that's what they are. They're not really, what we have is a class of people that wanted to be politicians mm -hmm. and they're smart. in the fact that they're taking it to the bank, but, they're not they don't have the passion to run the country no they're they get every day i hear that most of them just they, some assistant comes gets them takes them across the street sets them down in front of a phone bank and makes them call donors repeatedly and raise money for the republican party i don't i think it's all i mean it's they're just cogs in the wheel they're not they're not Mr. Jones goes to Washington or the people that wrote the, no. Decor the Constitution. They're just puppets. They're just meat sacks. Most yeah. of them. I'm sure there's some really good ones. But there I'm are, but like casting a wide net. But most of them are just, yeah, like Micah says, clock in, clock out. And they don't have any passion for no. the country. And see, that's that's what Trump had. He had passion for what he was talking about. Like, like the guy or not, like he had passion about what he did. He, he didn't need any teleprompter. He didn't need any script about what he was doing or why or anything like that. I think that's what resonated so well with me. It was like, I'm willing to tell somebody to go pound sand, you know, a human or not. But like, that's what people are looking for is like realism and like belief and like passion and faith in what you're doing. Like, I don't need to read something to tell you what I'm thinking or I believe. I fucking know it because that's what I believe. That's what I think, you know, so I can, I can talk about these things. I can debate with you because that's who I am. It's not something you programmed in my head and shoved me out on the stage so i can read it poorly from a 80 inch monitor um you know that's the whole point about people being there they're supposed to be there Rawls, you're looking antsy what do you got brother you're on mute too homeschool i just think people are shit full of being told what to think and what to yeah. do and, and they're tired of it they're and but i don't think that the everyday politician is done believing that they have the upper hand and controlling society i think that they're just i don't know i think they're a little too much into themselves to actually believe that people have had enough oh they're definitely <laughs> way too into themselves yeah yeah especially with <laughs> at one point we got to talk about entertainment spotlight in this thing on a good note but the uh it's been pointed out the hilarity of the abortion thing and nobody really identifying what a woman is yet having women's marches and you know like, like the whole find the beginning of that circle uh it makes your brain hurt like also oh, oh so now it's defined but it wasn't before when it was handy that way so uh you know the lunacy of people just identifying themselves however they feel like that day um and then that changes so it's so ridiculous now <laughs> absolutely asinine makes me laugh yeah so so fundamentally broken yes well said it's so, it's so obvious what they do with like the florida bill with the the, the oh yeah you mean don't say gay the don't say gay bill which and, is it's not anywhere yeah that religiously but yeah. then if it, the, and they'll fact check that to death, but they will never fact check. Well, yeah, it's not nowhere anywhere in it does it say don't say gay. Right. It, it, yeah. It's a complete made up false narrative. One hundred percent incorrect yeah. narrative. Like, like, you know, if you're if you're talking about the Ministry of Truth, there's plenty of things to start with if you wanted to earn anybody's trust. Of like, uh, well, yeah, this was incorrect. This is actually factual this way. But, you know, that's the whole, like, that's literally the chicken or the fox went in the hen house and that kind of thing. There are people like us who know what's going on. Most mm -hmm. people probably kind of understand what's going on. But there's probably a significant percentage of the population that 
thinks like, oh, they heard that this bell is a don't say gay bell. You can't mm-hmm. say gay in school. And yeah, and I think the Democrats are counting on them to vote and influence the vote a certain way. And they leverage the media to support that. And the same time, they call somebody like Tucker Carlson or Joe Rogan, you know, threat to democracy. Yeah, think about that uh, statement. Like you're you're talking about open opinions and, and debate. Like, That's against democracy. Like I don't like, think that word like, means what you think it means. There's a significant percentage of us that know, like you guys are lying. Yes. You know, like, yeah, we know. But they yeah. don't know. But they don't know. <laughs> and they won't believe you because you're a racist. So yeah. you know, they're not gonna believe you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's but like when you're when you're like like Joe Rogan, not conservative, not for, like overall, not even remotely. Um like he goes hunting, man, he's got some point of views, but like overall, he's been kind of liberal most of his life. Yeah, he's just like questions and talks, and now he's some wacko, you know. Which everybody listens to him like, and it's his numbers are up. That's good stuff. I mean that that part's important, you know. Yeah, every time they try to pull something from people, they, like they kicked off loads of TikTok off a of, off oh. of, uh, Twitter, and uh, isn't that ridiculous? Like, they caused such a backlash once they came back on. They gained like yeah, oh, wow. a million followers or something. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm following them now because I'm like I got to go watch it just because it's like. Literally, it's what it is. Liberal idiots on TikTok. It's like, how could you kick them off Twitter? Like, they're literally just showing what somebody else is posting freely already. Like, it's just condensed. Like, what's your problem? Yeah, the lunacy. Yeah, the lunacy. Has anybody, uh, anybody got a movie thought? Like, we've talked about movies in the past. I think we're just going to all start over because it's been like a year since we've talked about an entertainment spotlight. It doesn't have to be a movie. It could be a book, a poem, song. Richard. Did we ever talk about Led Zeppelin? And um not directly, I don't believe, no. Well last time we said like come up with a Led Zeppelin song, right? Have to re- like it's been too long, Joel. I actually forgot. It sounds vaguely familiar, but yeah. Well, here's a, my favorite Led Zeppelin song. Dun-na, dun-na, dun-na. Yeah. Is that what you're suggesting? We, we come back with our favorite Led Zeppelin song? Sometimes Jess wears a Led Zeppelin t shirt. <laughs> play the Led Zeppelin song. Like, do you like this song? And why she didn't why am I song. sitting here thinking of the wedding singer with the Led Zeppelin t shirt? <laughs> because in the wedding singer, uh, the boy George impersonator sang yeah. a Led Zeppelin song. Right, but didn't his girlfriend mm-hmm. wear the Led Zeppelin T-shirt and was gonna jinx the band? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Her ex-girlfriend, maybe something like that. But you're so yeah. Jess was wearing a Zeppelin shirt and didn't know a Zeppelin song. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. They have they have, a, they have a huge catalog. Let's be honest. Fucking millennials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your suggestion, Joel, though? We come back with our favorite Zeppelin song? Is that what you want no, to talk about? No, it's something we already did. I, well, we didn't ever do it, but that's fine. We're starting all over. So, uh, Hey, how about an update? Anybody, Raleigh or Richard, you guys watch Old Henry yet? No. Cheese and rice. <laughs> you know Should've what I've been watching? I've been watching 1883. Do you watch that show? I don't yeah. have a Paramount Plus, yeah. It's yeah, I have. Pre- previous to uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. So good it's good it, it's it's almost i was just actually telling somebody that today it's a little bit lonesome dovish oh wow yeah that yeah. sounds worthy it's way better than yellowstone i might have to spring for paramount plus or whatever it's on is it on paramount plus is that right yeah yeah, yeah. i might have to spring for that for a while and yeah it's catch a, up. It, it's a little i don't know a little dramatic but um it's it's of a lot of the shit that you see on TV, it's actually not too bad to watch. I struggle because Tim McGraw's in it, and I don't like Tim McGraw, but I might have you to know, look that. He's good at it. He's he good. doesn't. He plays a pretty good role. Yeah, it pains me to hear, but I'll believe it. Faith Hill. Faith Hill plays a good role too. Eh. Oh, she's in it too. Yeah. yeah. 
Jesus. They have like some kind of contract or something? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, we got a, we got a question too uh, from the, the hotline here on uh, Facebook Live. Has anybody seen 2,000 Mules yet? We haven't talked about that documentary. I've not, that. No. I've not yet. It's on my list for sure. One time when I was in Bishop, California, I saw 2,000 Mules. Easy. <laughs> At the Bishop Mule Days. Actually, party mom that wrote in that question, she's been in Bishop Mule Days like a thousand times. Yeah. So, That's... so 2,000 Mules is about... I think it's Dinesh D'Souza's mm -hmm. documentary about all the ballot stuff in. Yeah. yeah. Know. Which, it's funny she brings that up because we were actually talking about how people were going to vote. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, it doesn't really probably fucking even matter how we vote because there's a good chance that it's going to come out the way somebody wants it to come out anyway. That's that's some of the stuff I learned in at least in my state. It's pretty locked down. Like, wow. yeah. yeah, like when when they get checked in, like if they've already voted or they're in the wrong precinct or it's like not valid, like it fucking stops. Like, yeah. So. I, uh, what are the statistics? Does anybody know what the current statistics are crossing our southern border right now with the illegals? It's thousands, um, and that's even uh, what they're admitting uh, to. Uh, a day billions a year yeah yeah where in the name of you know who are we putting all these people no they're shipping them to the interior dude like they're literally putting them on planes and then flying to like fucking indianapolis and all over yeah i yeah. talked to a guy down out of central oregon who uh manages a, a large ranch down there and has a lot of employees on the ranch and they one of the rent ranch employees wives was home with kids and had to call the manager because her husband was out that there was some somebody lurking around the barns at, at the place that they live at and he actually went up there at gunpoint and had to hold the guy till authorities could come and it was a recent illegal that came across was snooping around said he'd actually spent the night in one of their houses the night before and was just lurking around and mm -hmm. then it was out in the middle of nowhere I mean, yeah i wonder how you get there well at, he did find out that um apparently this guy got shipped to bend oregon and um was screwed up on some sort of drugs and um got sideways with somebody and was taken out there and dropped off in the middle of nowhere and was left for the wolf steed or whatever but he said he ended up having to contact authorities to come get him because he wouldn't leave How about a, it's truly a broken broken jacked up system like when you don't believe in a border of your own country yeah no yeah. i that reason alone just makes me want to go down and buy more pistols for every vehicle we own seething anger and disappointment that that that's going on right now that thing it's actually being allowed to happen yeah i i just i don't know i can't the only word that comes to mind with our current administration is tyranny it's inept tyranny like yeah it's not even inept it's like it's intentional like you really yeah. could not be screwing things up this bad yeah unless it's part of your plan seriously yeah, yeah like this is it's an unacceptable thing and a normal president would be like no you can't do that but this president's you know, all right come on in and yeah. why are, they're doing it for they must be doing it for some reason it's not innocent voters so, man oh we can't handle it of course you can handle it you just choose not to handle it, it, was, it was, we were handling it pretty well before i mean it wasn't <laughs> perfect but it was pretty well locked down yeah, well, I was in uh, Denver on a layover on the way down to Texas, and um, Kelly and I got really fortunate to run into a couple of old, older gentlemen that were actually flying into Oklahoma in the terminal mm. next to us, and nice guys. One of them was a firefighter from down south of Tucson, um, retired, and he was telling me that he has factual evidence that there are actually cartel snipers inside of the U.S. trying to take out our border patrol agents. If that's not a little concerning, mm -hmm. 
why in the hell is our military not in there? Yeah. Yeah. If we're having military action anywhere, if we're spending $40 billion anywhere, it should be on our border. These are snipers hired by the goddamn cartel. Now, Mm -hmm. my next question is, how deep in the pockets of all these freaking politicians in D.C. is the cartel? Has to be. Has to be. Drugs are just, like, drugs and people are just pouring, dude. Literally. Like, if you... You can go, I don't know, I've never watched CNN, but like you just go look every night on Fox News, they have a the dude like this lives at the border. Like, well, here's we spotted these 150 people this afternoon that just rushed the border. Like it's what they do. Yeah. And it's a uh, you know, you can't have a country without borders. Like fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl's replaced almost all other drugs. Yeah. Yeah. What percentage of that's coming out of China though? All of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just so, take Mexico. What's that? We just take Mexico. If Russia's going to go take Ukraine, we take Mexico. Sure. <laughs> Do another I think round. Taking Mexico would be like taking Afghanistan. Yeah. There, there's a great joke about that too, but it's it's probably not appropriate. So yeah. Eighty um, percent of the country would probably welcome us to Mexico. They're like, oh, they're, 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 the, the true Mexico. honest people of Mexico. For sure, yeah, yeah. They're um, already here. Yeah, that's no doubt. We can get rid of the cartel. Oh. Hey, let's come up with the entertainment spotlight for next week because uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm getting tired. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, is, that four, is that 10,000 mules out? 2,000 mules? Yeah, I think yeah. you can. I think it's been released on several different places. You can find it, yeah. On Rumble. Is it on Rumble? Yeah. Really? That's cool. That's what I heard. I, I, so. um, uh, I have IMDB up. Let me look. Let me look here real quick. It doesn't show where it's at on that of course. <laughs> Top cast: Joe Biden as himself. Archive footage. That's freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah it looks like it's out on rumble so i just started typing 2000 i started i typed two zero and 2000 mules movie came up it's already had a million views on rumble that's pretty impressive um as far as stand-up comedy so i don't know if anybody ever watched shane gillis's special mm-hmm. i think some of you did yeah uh, uh Joe List has a new one on YouTube. Oh, cool. Really fun. Um, I Joe just List. looked on my uh, books app on my iPhone and you can get 2,000 mules in the auto book right there. So if you want to have an audio book to listen to. Oh, cool. It's been out since May 6th and it hasn't caused much stir so it's being heavily ignored yeah so i think we should watch it for next time <laughs> when when do you giggle in joel i mean what's the point who cares what do you mean what's the point i mean it's not gonna, it's not gonna have any meaningful impact why would you say that? You haven't even seen it yet. Fair enough. But okay. I think the objective is, is like the election was stolen from Trump, right? I don't know. I think so. I doubt he framed it that way. He probably just framed it as looking into election fraud. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. just pretty savvy. He's not really a... Uh... He's going to show a bunch of videos of people stuffing ballot boxes their ballots that they're not allowed to do and we're going to be like here's the smoking gun this is illegal and then the other people are going to say you don't know what they were doing yeah well let's watch it and find out how's that sound okay. humor me humor me yeah i'll watch it like that. okay you'll do that for next time thanks jen for bringing that up appreciate the reminder let's uh joe list youtube special What's that? You have to watch Joe List's YouTube special. 
Joe List? Yep. Okay. Definitely worth a watch. Very funny. Cool. Most definitely. I'm all over that. Uh, Joel, you want to kick off the uh, happy ending? Uh, no, no. I okay. mean, I'm, I'm looking over here. The, my final parting thought is this baby formula thing. So my cousin mm -hmm. texted me. Uh, he has a, I, I think Dylan's probably like three months old or six months old. I'm not sure. But he was born like three months premature. Mm -hmm. So my cousin Andy sent out a SOS text message to a bunch of people. It was like, we need this very specific type of baby formula. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Oh, Similac. Yeah. Similac. Neo, sure. For babies born prematurely. So this fucking kid's on this very specific type of formula. And I went to five or six places looking for this and I finally found one bottle of it. Like, yeah. He's gonna come pick he's collecting it on Monday. But so um I don't know if it's information they already know or not. Kelly did a little research on this very topic. And if you go to a Canadian Amazon site, I don't know if there's a difference. I'm not I'm not real if you look on her Facebook page, she actually posted a, a link to the everything, but Canada does not have this shortage. The U S does. Mm -hmm. And you can order it out, of, order most anything out of Canada with a little extra shipping time. So oh, very good. That, that Same being, I, I honestly have no idea. But. All right. Good enough. Yeah. So there's a, what I heard is there's a 60% shortage or 40% shortage. 40 percent less supply than there was there is normally well yeah because there's a huge manufacturing plant in i want to say michigan that has been shut down because of uh some kind of uh quality control issue that's why yeah. it looks yeah. a lot more than 40 or 60 percent when you see the shelf mm -hmm. yeah, place where like like okay here's the space it's supposed to be and this is six deep on the shelf and there's one. It's more than sixty percent, forty percent. So maybe, maybe uh, macro level, but the, it's just not the, the places where it needs to be. FDC, the FDC, yeah. Food and food, the Food and FDC. Drug Administration has uh, pulled a bunch of baby food because it's uh, high in metals. So. Anyways, hey, there is a Canadian Amazon, and there is Similac Neo Share. It looks like it's in a different can, though. Just saying. So, oh, look cool. it yeah. Thanks for passing there that along, Kelly. Thanks, Kels. Uh, That's the first yeah. Thing is happening. I don't know. No, 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 no. yeah. Darts. We're getting better at darts. Working on those triple twenties, man. Dude. 180 yeah so. hopefully next time i see you, i'll have a 180 under my belt that'll be nice that's your mission yeah ross happy ending oh it's we have had lots of rain and today we had 73 degrees mm -hmm. and finally gonna get some grass growing um that's pretty exciting news for us around here in the ranching community up here we're all pretty tickled um and it's branding season so that's a lot of fun to get to go see folks and kind of celebrate the long winter and calving and and uh, have have a little fun stamping calves um and then uh, just probably the highlight for me here lately is just been getting to spend quite a bit of time with my son and having a a lot of fun interacting with him he's getting to that age where he's giggly and smiling and starting to want to crawl around so that's been been lots of fun yeah those are good videos on facebook so you, oh yeah take him on a horse oh yeah down under grandma and grandpa's in texas that was fun just got a uh, message from a uh, loyal listener opie 
He sent me a website uh, called Best News Here that you can watch 2,000 Mules on as well. Best nice. News Here. Yeah. Thanks, Ope. Loyal listener, Opie in Nevada. Yeah. So sorry, Rolls, to interrupt. Oh, no worries. We're good. Richard, you ever reach around? Yeah. I had a little uh, nice uh, quick micro trip with my wife to Sisters, Oregon. Nice. Yeah. That town shuts down at 8 o'clock. We got a cool hotel if you're ever in Sisters called the Ski Inn. Oh, okay. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Anyways, uh, great bakery. And then this week I am off to the grass fed exchange for a few days. So, oh, outstanding. Yeah. Where, where's it at? Uh, Dallas. Oh, that's why you're headed to the big D. Yep. That's where I'm going to the big D. Don't do the big D. in Dallas. Oddly enough, second time we've done this song today. Depart. <laughs> yeah joel missed the first time yeah so but uh yeah life is uh <clears throat> turning into spring and that spring and summer are my favorite seasons so um life's good i dig it outstanding uh Mine's mostly work related. I've been getting to do some work uh, with the R and D team, which my new company has like ninety people on R and D, and we basically had like one and a half. Um, so that's been really cool on some on some alternative like DNA collection sources. And then um, I think I get to go to the Netherlands in July for the World Congress on uh, Genetic Supply and Livestock Production. So um, that could be cool as well. So between that and Fiddling around the house has been pretty fun. Last time you went out of the country, there was a pandemic. So, no, you can't go. <laughs> I'd argue that, but you're spot on right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like the last plane almost to come back into America from right before the Rona started, shut everything down. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'll take that into consideration. Maybe I'll just tell my boss, like, mm, dude, remember my, last time I was on a plane in international, all this shit happened. So I think I'll just stay here. Yeah. I will. I don't mean to rain on your uh, closing statements, but getting back to flying again, holy hell, after two years, I was not prepared. I had a knife in my bag. I had bullets in my other bag. Yeah, I was quite the quite the airport security i'm like yeah normally i travel a lot better than this but i'm a little bit out of practice <laughs> <laughs> well yeah you and everybody else mister yeah first time i flew a while ago i flew in february i went to wisconsin i was like it's not the first time i've flown but it had been a while i was like hope i uh, remember how to do this yeah like <laughs> <laughs> whoops a daisy it didn't have any of those faux pas but yeah it was still pretty like so uh, it used to be like you know almost blindfolded and now it's like a whole like, new experience so nice to be able to move around the country again <sighs> fucking ridiculous yeah no no masks anymore though so that's nice yeah that real quick on that too that that does totally crack me up i follow uh, like one guy i follow on on instagram is a science chick and uh you know the masks were off she lives in florida too the mask thing went off and she's like to the post i'm going to continue to wear my mask and i, I just ask that you don't you know, chastise me or call me out for that in public. And I was like, so where was that asking for forgiveness when it was the other way around? Like, go pound sand. Like, hey, I don't care if you want to wear a freaking Kleenex box in your head. I really don't care. Um, but like the audacity, really. Like, I was just like, you you can pound sand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you if I want to. It slays me. That's why there's still signs on my building that says masks are welcome. Like, could you be any more passive aggressive about your position on that? Like, like, <laughs> like you're ever going to say like no masks allowed. Like I can see maybe in a bank, like this, this is a security issue, but like on the building masks are welcome. Oh, I feel so much better now. All is well. So, anyway, I did wear a mask at the red cross. Mm-hmm. And then I had to wear a mask when I took my real estate test. That must have been fun. Yeah, it's super good to take 
a 90 minute test and a 50 minute test with no oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your brain starved for oxygen enough as it is. You don't need to add to that. No, no. So. Oh. Well, does anybody uh, have anything before we sign off for this uh, reunion episode of Far Reaches podcast? It's been great to get everybody back together. Appreciate you guys all showing up and being here. Yeah. So no. we're going to try to watch 2,000 Mules. I'm going to watch the Joe List YouTube comedy special as well for Mr. Joel. Um, we'll encourage everybody uh, listening or now or later on to send in your suggestions for other things. Appreciate all the feedback from Party Mom on 2,000 Mules and for Opie sending in the uh, extra information as well. So we'll uh, we'll keep pressing ahead on that. We'll put some, If I can find any more links, I'll put them in this when I post this as well. So um, we're going to we're going to end the live here right about now, and then uh, we'll finish off the, uh, the whole thing. But until next time, we'll uh, we'll see y'all out there. Keep on reaching, and uh, we'll see you real soon. <laughs>